South Africa is in the brink of collapse. We are a monarchy without a monarch and our country is more divided than ever. In Pretoria the Boers are striving for greater autonomy and even independence. Across the aisle is the African National Congress. They strive for greater equality among Europeans and Africans. On foreign policy we are threading the thin line of neutrality. The American wants us in the OFN and the Germans wants us on their side. If we anger one of the sides or lean too much towards the other it could lead to a violent breach of our independence. But all is not as bad as it seems. Because about 100 years ago diamonds were discovered in our country. We managed to quickly nationalize the industry and now we have a lot of money we can use to both invest in our economy and buy weapons from either the Germans or the Americans. The first and biggest issue we will have to fix is the deep division between the people in our country. We have slowly begun reforming to please the ANC, but the Boers, with the help of German funding, are opposing any reforms. We can't appease both sides. The Boers are the bigger threat right now, but the ANC are growing larger and larger each day. We will soon have to decide if we should maintain the status quo or if we should seek ANC's help against the Boers. But we have a second issue too. We are a monarchy but with no king or queen. The Boers want to abolish it and create a republic. The problem with this is that they would have the majority and turn our beautiful country into a rotting German colony. So we must do our best to keep the monarchy as it is. But the Boers are obstructing the parliament and after a week of gridlock we have been forced to submit to their demands. We will hold a referendum on the issue. Right now the Poles are polling the support of the monarchy at 53%. We are on the lead but we need to start to hold rallies and start campaigning so we get a more comfortable majority. We began with holding local rallies boosting our support with 5%. But now it's time to choose the strategy. Should we keep the status quo or begin talks with the NAC? After a long night of arguments we have concluded that it is best to begin talks with the ANC. This will in the long term lead to us giving up our majority and grant voting rights to everyone. It has to be done, otherwise we will have to fight both the Boers and the NAC. It is much better to only fight the Boers. Luckily the NAC were open to talk and soon we met their most prominent leader, Tambo. To please him we began supporting enfranchisement, slowly improving our voting rights. We started supporting the ANC moderates and weakened the radicals. But more importantly for the coming referendum we began rallying their support in favor of a monarchy. But while we did, the support for monarchy waned and the strength of the Boers is rising. There is not much we can do as our political power is low, but once we maintained our neutrality we gained about 50. With this we could spew out even more propaganda against the Boers and also to campaign for monarchism. We released some of our political prisoners from the ANC and then we were finally ready. We made our alliance with the ANC official. It's too late to turn back now. The right wing elements in our white community are loudly protesting this action. But to no avail. With our alliance with the ANC revealed we can begin with some reforms. The first is to make civil services available for everyone and also to appoint members of the ANC to high ranking positions. One of the cornerstones of the future is education. So we also began deracializing it to let black children have the same education as white ones. But all these reforms in favor of the NAC hasn't helped our struggle against the Boers. So after all these years it's finally time to crack down on their paramilitary groups. 
But to be able to completely crack down on them, we will have to expand our military. And the best way is to open up our military to everyone with no distinction of ethnicity. We even created the first all-black infantry division. We have successfully implemented a few reforms, so it's finally time. Our boldest move yet. We will grant equal voting rights to all citizens of South Africa, with no regard to their ethnicity. We finally have universal voting, and of course the Boers began protest. But we didn't expect the force of their protests. The Boers are now stronger than ever and support for monarchy has almost collapsed. In some areas the police is even refusing to crack down on the Boer Nazi party. This is turning into a disaster. And right as it couldn't get worse, protests in Cape Town broke out. Our troops told them to stay back but they continued marching forward. Soon we opened fire on the unarmed crowd. 40 people dead. It was a horrifying massacre. The population is turning against us. Outside of our country, Hitler had died and the German Reich is in the civil war. This might seem good, but now their African colonies can do whatever they want. And together they formed the Africa Shield. Officially it is only for defensive purposes, but we have a feeling it could be something much worse. And after the new alliance and the Cape Town massacre, the Boers feel that they were ready. They began revolting and take up arms in the north of our country. And it quickly escalated into the Third Boer War. Their army is strong and they have a ginormous morale. If we want to win this conflict, we have to take a defensive approach and sadly give up a lot of land. It is time to mobilize our army and steer our economy towards war. Even though we said we should go defensively, we tried a small encirclement and managed to kill one Boer division. After only nine days of war, the Boers requested German help and they gladly joined. How are we supposed to win this? We are at war with the Boers and the entire German Reichskommissariats in Africa. Where are the Yankees? We will immediately request their assistance. But we need to hold our defensive lines before they arrive. They have at least passed the Security Resolution 13 condemning the German invasion of our territory. And soon we began receiving money from the OFN. With this money we dared to make another small offensive. We managed to encircle two of their motorized divisions. But with their high morale they managed to defend their ground for far longer than we would. Luckily they didn't have any reinforcements in the area so we did manage to destroy them. With the money we received we will also start buying weapons from the Americans. Like guns and jets. But then the Germans in the west began massively attacking our lines. So we were forced to retreat. The Americans are now finally sending two volunteer divisions. From here we will hold, because what the Germans don't know is that we have built some forts in the area. And this is our territory, we have the upper hand. We will stay on this line until we are ready to push the invaders back. They tried multiple times to push us back, but we held them back for most of the times. But those few times where they broke through created a problem, because we don't have any defense in depth. So we had to retreat even more to the mountains of Eastern Cape. The Germans and Boers now slowed their attacks because they knew we had the terrain on our side. While we held out in the mountains we bought more American weapons and they even airlifted some for free. But our economic situation also collapsed. We have a high debt and our GDP is shrinking. But we are at war, this is the consequences. And soon we found ourselves in a full-blown fiscal crisis. To meet our casualties and plans to expand our army, we expanded our conscription. Now we decided our plan for the war. 
The Boers started it, but the Germans are a much bigger threat. So we will invest in destroying them. And what better way than to use our alliance with the ANC and support their guerrilla fighters. But then we received worrying news from Europe. The German civil war is over, which means that they will probably start sending help to the Boers and the Reichskommissariats. So it's time to try an offensive. It went slow and the Germans fought violently, but after a long fight we managed to advance. After that we turned to the sea and encircled three German divisions. Now we will try to replicate the last encirclement but attack from two sides instead of one. After a shorter battle than last time we managed to advance in two tiles and encircle a part of the German army. The tide is slowly turning to our side. So with our small attacks being successful we tried the bigger one. We liberated all of little Namakualand except a small part and then continued into the Boer Republic. They weren't ready for our attack so we managed to drive up to their capital city. The Boers have a great defense in the south of their countries but around their capital that we just captured they have far less. So we will do a big encirclement that is really risky. We began from Bloemfontein and advanced towards Durban, a port city. Because we would advance far from our supply lines, we attacked from the south to try and encircle half of the Boer front. We could now continue towards the port city of Durban. After some fighting in the outskirts, we managed to capture it. This meant we had encircled and soon destroyed the big part of the Boer army. We have totally killed around 373,000 of their men, more than half of their starting army. This means their lines are weakly defended. We will take the risk and exploit their weakness. It's a big risk because it might stretch our front lines a bit too much. We broke through after only a few days and just kept up the momentum. Soon we reached Johannesburg and Pretoria the two biggest city in the illegitimate Boer Republic. The Boer leadership hadn't expected this big of a win for our side, so they surrendered in a shock. But it will take time to capture all of their paramilitary divisions, as they will probably continue the fight. Somehow we defeated the Boers, and now only the Germans are left. Surprisingly, we have almost destroyed their army. Maybe they have problems with our NAC supporters behind their lines. Anyways, we are ready to destroy the Germans. We have completely destroyed the German colonial forces. It seems like they were only a paper tiger. This is a huge victory. We have gained new land in Namibia, Rhodesia and southern Mozambique. We have transferred the rest to the USA because otherwise we would stretch ourselves too much. We can finally become an official member of the OFN ready to serve justice to the world. But we have a long way left, our economy needs to be normalized and we need to continue reforms in favor of everyone. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.